Yeah, I thought I played pretty well. Um, you know, I had a few breaking runs. Uh, she missed a couple of balls that were kind of tough in the side pocket after a couple of good breaks that she had. Um, and I just took advantage of them. And yeah, it's always nice to get the first match out of the way and get a little feel for the table. Over on the other table, Mayuki Oi leading by two racks to one against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. That's also the final match of the opening session. First rack. Shame I'm, to work. I'm looking forward to this one. I think this one will be close. A great break from Shane there. And a nice little flick on the one but has it landed in a funny position where he can't make it. Yeah, I think it just got kicked into a weird position there, Michael. We've seen it time and time again in recent years, haven't we, Jason? I think these two are probably still the two leading players from the U.S. side of things. Yeah, I think um, these are the two big boys. You know, they have a lot of good players behind them, but I think Shane and Skyler have the most experience. Um, you know, they've played in many big events, played World Cup of Pool together. Um, they have a good chemistry, so I think those two are definitely the top two Americans. Yeah, and what we saw at the Moscone Cup just before Christmas, where you were MVP once again, was that the Americans are still very reliant on Van Bonin. He played a huge amount of matches, and it didn't really happen for him. So if he's not firing, the Americans really seem to struggle. Yeah, they need Shane to be on form. Um, Skyler played great, the full event. Um, I think if Shane plays anywhere near like he can, um, then it's a totally different story. I think it, the matches are a lot closer than what it looks like, the, the actual score at the end. But they're not, they're not too far away. They just need him to perform uh, under the gun, you know, and he, you know he's got it. It's just the Moscone Cup's a different beast. Foul shot, illegal contact, ball in hand. Well, I didn't like that shot that he pushed out to. I thought he would have just banked the one down without pushing up, uh, pushing out, just banked the one straight down the table and get the cue ball over towards the the three and the eight. Uh, now he's give Skyler ball in hand, so let's we'll see what Skyler can do. Twenty-eight years of age, Skyler Woodward. He's number 19 in the new world ranking list, but he's one of those players you feel if he plays to his potential this year, when we actually have a points-based list towards the end of 2022, he could be quite a few places higher than that. Quarter-finalist at the World Championship last year. Yeah, he played well last year at the World Championships. Um, I thought he was going to go um, all the way. But I think he uh, ran into Albin, I believe. Yeah, that was in the quarterfinals, and that was the end of his run. But he had already knocked out Fedor Gorst earlier on in the tournament. Yeah, there was a lot of big draws in that event. I think the last 64, I drew Shane first round. Um, so I think Fedor played skyler also in the first round or the second last 32 so there was a lot of tough matches um so he he did well to get to the quarters he would have been disappointed but i'm sure he'll be looking to go further this year yeah it was amazing to see you and shane playing each other so early on in the tournament we're used to seeing you guys on the big moments towards the end particularly in moscone's i guess in that uh, big high pressure environment and obviously it is in the early rounds but we would have been expecting to see that clash much later on in the tournament so Skylar Woodward pouncing effectively Shane Van Boney's error and he leads by one rack to nil 
Let's have a look at the world ranking system that we've been talking about. This was a list that was effectively put together by a committee and there's a points system now that's going to run through the year and we'll get a points based list out of that towards the end of 22 as I was saying. Just looking at this, Jason, as someone who's played all these guys so many times, what do you think of this order as it stands? Do you feel this is a fairly accurate representation of things? Yeah, I think um, to start off what we're trying to achieve in the rankings, you have to start from somewhere, you know, so I think they've, they've did the right thing and, you know, they've, they've did what they can to put it together and then now we've got many tournaments all year to... to um, put yourself up at the top so it's all about uh, showing up at these events and, and trying to go as far as possible and pick up as many points you're there at number 17 it was a relatively quiet year by your standards in 2021 so you've got to be aiming much higher than that top 10 at least yeah I'm uh, I'm definitely back um, I already know my game's back to where it was a couple of years ago um, you know COVID was around, we weren't really playing. Um, you know, I got involved and got my own business going and stuff like that. So I took a lot of time off of not playing and that reflected on some of my results going into the big events last year. Um, so I kind of had a look back and I know what I had to do to, to get myself back in the game and get myself back to that level where I'm competing to win. Nice break there from Skyler. Nice open shot on the one. Just pot this one ball and try and come out one rail and shoot the two in the same corner. I like putting a stroke on this ball. Don't baby it. Now you might on another table have seen that go in, Jason. How did, tight did you find the pockets? Yeah, they're definitely tight. Um, you know, Kelly missed a couple and after it she said, I can't believe that how tight the side pocket is. Coming in from an angle, it's very deceiving. Um, when you're playing on a standard table, which is like four and a half inches, you know, you get up there and you do your normal thing, but now you miss one and all of a sudden the pocket looks smaller every time you're shooting into it, so it's definitely tough out there. Um, it's going to get tougher also as the, the week goes on. But I think for professional pool, it's definitely the way forward. And any shot that you're playing with a bit of pace becomes so much more difficult now. Yeah, anything at, anything at speed kind of close to the rail... Um, you got to be real accurate. You can't be slamming them. They just won't take them. You might get away and see a couple slide in, but that's just because of the new cloth and the balls being slick. But like I said, in a couple of days, you're going to see balls hang up 100%. Shane Van Boning, hard to believe he's still only 38. It feels like he's been around forever. He's at number four in the new ranking system. Still America's finest, no question about that. Although we didn't see him particularly shine in the very biggest events in 2021. The fact is, he still won seven tournaments of different sorts in the course of the year. Yeah, he's definitely America's uh, best player. And he's probably Europe's best player in the Moscone Cup as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I knew we wouldn't get through this without a little dig somewhere. <laughs> It is you, after all. Uh, nah, he's that. You know, he's he's still going to win big events. You know, even if you know the top players seem to to find a way to win, um, even if they're struggling uh, in big events. At some point, you you always hit a gear. Uh, you can't go the full year, you know, and always be playing bad, especially when you got that much talent. Um, but it's not always down to playing bad or having bad results. It's your, the, the competition now is just ridiculous how good the competition is now. So there's a lot more tougher players. There was a lot of public needle, I think, between you and Shane when we were in Coventry for the Moscone Cup towards the end of 2020. I think what we saw in London this time, actually, with your comments was there's also a huge amount of respect. Yeah, I got a lot of respect from the... Listen, in any sport, there's always rivalry, right? So, and 
all, everybody plays someone or they lose. In snooker, it happens a lot too. You know, you got Ronnie, Judd, you got Mark Selby. A lot of them, it might look like they they like each other and whatever, but they always got stuff to say. You know, in their interviews or whatever. It's just part of the game. That one wiped its feet. Good shot though. It's gonna have to pot this one rail and come straight back up the middle of the table. Shoot the eight in the left corner. Looks perfect to tie this match up here at one one. See any mistakes from here. So, one all in this All American clash. Jason, uh, you'll be back in action later on tonight against Oliver Shulnocki, one of those uh, rising young European players. Yeah, I know he's been. Uh He's been on the rise since last year at the World Nine Ball. He uh, finished in the semi-final. And then I think he's been in the States a little while. He won a big bar table tournament there. And he's been performing well, what I've seen since he's been here. So it's going to be a tough match, and I'm um, looking forward to it. Okay, that's the next up for you. Thanks for dropping in, and we look forward to seeing You're you welcome. this evening. Have fun. Meanwhile, over on the other table, Noyuki Oi leading Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, 3-2. Noyuki we saw losing earlier to Joshua Filler, and then turning it round to beat Meshko Fortunski, so a mixed start for him. Back here, it's Shane Van Boning getting us underway in the third rack. Jason has uh, left the booth and uh, Phil Yates has stepped back in. And Phil, it is true what we were saying there, Shane Van Boning is still very much the number one player in America, but not only that, there's a real lack of anyone really coming through to challenge that status. Well, Skylar Woodward is also the clear number two. Then, what do you do in terms of the Moscone Cup? That's when the, the issues arise in terms of selection. But these two, they're stone cold certainties to be in the team for as long as they want to be. Seems rather surprising that they're actually playing each other. Normally you see them in a Moscone Cup team or playing for the USA in the, the World Cup of Pool. And now it's a head-to-head -head battle. That distinctive bridge, the way he, he takes the, the cue back in his own particular style. Love watching him play. You're right there, Michael. Jason could not resist a little dig, could he? Saying America's best player and then laughingly saying Europe's best player because the one thing you have to say about Shane Van Boning, and it's without dispute, his performances and his production rate in the Moscone Cup doesn't really reflect just how good a player he is. 
not at all. And I mean, he's very rarely been on the winning side. He's played 15 Moscone Cups. In fact, it's been the last 15. He's only been on the winning side in three of them. He's now played more actual matches in the Moscone Cup than anyone else in history, with 96. And he played so many back in December at Alexandra Palace. Well, this late November, early December, he's going to get that to 100. There's no doubt about it, because he will be selected, and he'll definitely play four times. Yeah, and America's chances of preventing Europe going three in a row will hinge to a very large extent on how well Shane Van Boning plays in Las Vegas. He's playing pretty well here, and he leads Skylar Woodward by two racks to one. America's big two both making their bow in this year's Predator Premier League and it's Shane Van Boning who leads Skylar Woodward by two racks to one. The one thing about both of these two they are great students of the break-off. And so coming into the event and playing what is the sixth match of the session, they'll have an awful lot of evidence to work on and know what best to do in terms of the break. Now that almost backfired. But there is a route through to the two. Become a consistently good player in recent years, Skylar Woodward. He's been in the top ten money winners in the world in each of the last five years. He's gone well past half a million dollars now. saying how it's strange to see them playing against each other. We're so used to seeing them as teammates. You were referring mostly to the Moscone Cup, but they did play in a World Cup final together for the USA back in 2017. Beat a succession of tough opponents, including the top seeds Chinese Taipei in the semi-finals. Were beaten by Austria in the final. 
World Cup. Not been particularly kind to the USA. They've only won it once, only been in the final three times. So after losing the last two racks, Skylar Woodward has capitalized to the full on having the break in this rack. And that's why we're tied up again at two apiece. Let's look in next door, Noyuki Oi, who's had a mixed start, one win, one defeat so far. He's up against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. And it's the man from Japan who's leading by four racks to two. If he can finish this off, it'll have been a fairly productive first session for him. And conversely, Sanchez Ruiz will have drawn a blank. Yeah, beaten 5 0 earlier by David Alcady. It was all inevitable, of course, once Carl asked me for my pick for the title and I went for him. But he's been showing good form in recent times. Needs to deliver it on one of the most high profile stages. That's surely the next aim for him. Well, at least you asked for a pick. I'm so bad at this. No one asked me, but I'll give my opinion yeah, anyway. I was going to ask you, yeah, so. Well, Jason Shaw, and then for a live outsider, Oliver Shalnocki. Yeah, not happening yet for the man from Spain. He could be onto something with Jason Shaw there. I mean, he did have a quiet 2021 until the Moscone Cup, which was a week where he was anything but quiet on and off the table. But I think he's uh, pretty determined now to get distractions out of the way and start showing us more of his true self in the year ahead. Well, there I was saying that SVB is well known as a student of the break-off. Yeah, and he's come up dry and give him more a look at the one here. So many balls to hide behind. That really was a loose one. Were you surprised he didn't attempt it? I thought there was more value in the safety, but of course he's got to execute. The thing here, the one ball will surely find its target. But with so much traffic on the table, position will be tricky. Extension, please. The red three ball partially masking the two, so needs to be accurate with the cue ball. Found the gap, but playing it like that, he was sacrificing any form of close position. And we've seen on these four inch pockets, this kind of pot can easily be driven into the jaws and stay on the table. Well, look at the juice on that. He can't quite believe how he's pulled it back. Struck it too sweetly for his own good. Partly a reflection of the cloth as well, I would say, Phil, because we've seen quite a few shots like that today from distance. Yeah, the good thing was he knew after what he did on the two, he could do the same thing on the three. Now, possible combination here, 5-9. We'll see in a moment. Let's also keep an eye on the other table. Yuki Oi, two balls away from completing victory. 
the last match of the opening session on that table against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, who's had a pretty miserable start. Only two racks won across his two matches. Meanwhile, Vamboni went for the combination and he's got it. So he leads once again at 3 2. It's a, a pleasant day for Naoki Oi. As Michael said, two wins out of three. He's playing the first match on table two in the evening session, which begins at five o'clock local time. He takes on Sanchez Ruiz's good pal, David Alcady. After that, well, Milton Keynes is Oi's oyster because he's finished for the day. What do you imagine Noyuki Oi might get up to on a free evening in Milton Keynes? Anyway, I suppose we can ask him tomorrow. A few players haven't actually been involved yet at all. Aloysius Yap, Alex Kazakis, Eklund Kachi. Haven't seen any of them, but they'll all be in action in the evening session. Yeah, when we were over at the US Open, where he played so well, the Americans were calling him Aloysius, but it is definitely Aloysius. He comes into the fray in our second match on table one this evening against Eklund Kachi. Starting off the five o'clock session, it will be Skylar Woodward against Alexander Kazakis, who's fresh from winning the Wisconsin Open. But will Woodward go into that with a win on the board? It's 3 2 down here. All shots falling ahead. Mm, it's all going against him now. Start the clock, please. Well, that's the last time anyone's going to want to hear you talking about how good they are at uh, the break-off shot. Ever since you said it about these two, they seem to have forgotten how to do it. Scratches, dry breaks, you name it. I'll put the, the blockers on them. So good to see Shane Van Boning here, though. What a class act. So many titles. Yeah, most notably five US Opens. Joint all-time record. Actually beat Jason Shaw in the uh, semi-final of the last of those back in 2016. Then Chang Young Lin in the final to tie Earl Strickland on five. But he's just such a regular winner. I mean, that was one of nine tournaments... He won that year. And this is the thing. There are events going on, big and small, in all parts of America and Europe, all the time, really. And Van Boning just plays such a full schedule and just loves accumulating titles, whatever their nature. And I think the padded-out schedule, thanks to Matrim Multisport this year and these new nine-ball world rankings, I think they will provide for him extra motivation to get right back to the top of the tree. Well, he would love to have that title of world number one. No question about it. He knows he hasn't been the best player in the world over the last few years. If anything, he's actually come up short of his own high standards. But he'll still feel he has the capability to overtake all these younger players, led by Albin Ocean. As I was saying, he is still only 38, which seems remarkable when you consider how much he's accomplished in the game. Feels like he's been around for a generation or two already. And he's going to be first to the hill here. Scratch off the break. Very expensive for Skylar Woodward. Shane Van Boning takes full advantage and he leads 4-2.
Welcome back to the last knockings of the opening session on day one of the 2022 Predator Premier League pool. And Shane Van Boning will be hoping this is the last rack because he's leading 4-2. Having pulled away from two all against his US Moscone Cup teammate Skylar Woodward. Van Boning has the break the in rack seven. Shane Van Boning is breaking on the hill, leading by four rack to two. Oh, it's all over. Golden break. What a way to finish. What a magnificent way to end the match. Shane Van Boning pots the nine ball off the break, completes a run of three racks in a row, and starts his campaign with a 5-2 win over...